Hello and welcome to EarthAndSkyPhoto.com. My name is Jeff and thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah. Wanted to share with you today my experiences on first light with the new modified astrophotography full frame mirrorless Canon RA camera. And I had a chance to do first light testing with that two nights ago. And I wanted to give you some insight, some of the background on why to go with this camera, why I went with this camera. We're also going to do some pixel peeping. We're going to see how it performs in the field on an astrophotography target. And I'll show you how I connected for the testing, the telescope and the camera setup that I used and the mount setup that I used. So we're going to have three sections. but. Right now I wanted to share with you kind of the whys and why I went with Canon RA. I had previously just upgraded my landscape photography to the Sony A7R3. And I had a couple of lenses for, for the Sony and that system in the Sony is very impressive. My legacy is with Canon equipment mainly for landscape photography, but of course recently I've had a lot of experience with the T, T1i, the T3i, the T5i, and having my friend Brent Maynard modify those cameras for astrophotography use. So I've had a lot of DSL use with astrophotography on Canon modified cameras. So this is the third modified camera that Canon is producing but the first full frame. So Canon has, since I do mostly astrophotography and astroscapes, Canon has a soft place in my heart because of their commitment to the astrophotography community. Now, I'm guessing since you're watching this video, you do understand the importance of having a modified camera where the traditional UVIR filter is taken out for what is used on most landscape and portrait cameras and is replaced with a, a filter that is open more to the hydrogen alpha, the critical hydrogen alpha line, around 656 nanometers, to give us more sensitivity to astronomical objects, like this behind me. This is the famous Horsehead Orion, Orion's Belt complex, and I'll show you a little bit more of that later. When Canon came out with this, this caused me to have to reevaluate my camera gear, it's a great thing about technology. And I decided to do the conversion back to Canon from Sony. And I was just, I was hesitant to do that because I was so happy with the Sony a7R 3 But this is such an appealing lens and I feel obligated almost to support Canon anytime they make this type of a commitment to astrophotography. So I went with the, uh, the RA. And I believe it's going to do nicely for general purpose photography, landscape photography, as well as um, astroscapes and through the telescope for our astronomical objects. So that's kind of the why behind it. A lot of my comparisons are going to be relative to the Sony a7R 3 RA is more of a prosumer body than a what would be called a professional body like the a7R 3 Still very competent, very capable pairs very favorably. There are a lot of things I like about this camera body. I do have some, some zonks. I'm going to give it, but we'll save those for later. So the grip is really comfortable. You don't need an L bracket, although I have ordered one from a small rig, but the camera fits in my hands. fits very nicely. You can see here the screen, an LCD screen on top is your mode setting, and it also gives you all of your manual parameters. You can see the ISO and the shutter speed and the aperture. So that's a great quick reference right there. So you don't always have to rely on the, um, the screen. The articulating screen is really superior to that on the Sony. Sony just has a kind of a pivot, hinged pivot um, screen. So this articulating screen, you can see here, you can manipulate in multiple ways. Whatever angle your telescope is in, you can angle that articulating screen in a way where you can see the reference the screen very easily. And it's a fully capable touch screen. All your menu items are accessible 
by touch. Something new to me, I'm not sure how common it is for Canon right now, is they have this, um, they have this slider bar and it's sensitive to touch. So you can, when you touch it, you can slide one way or the other. You can set it up in the menu to do multiple things. In my case right now, I have it set up to go a zoom, uh, increase the zoom during focus from zero to 5x up to 30x. So it's just a simple swipe. It's on all the time for me. Uh, do you touch it accidentally? Yes. Um, is it easy to get back out of? Yes. So right now I have it on all the time, but that's still, that's a function I'm learning and getting used to. Battery. Uh, right now I don't have a battery grip. I don't plan on adding a battery grip. I, it's just a little bit more weight. So I'm really happy to report that the other night I did three hours of imaging and the temperature was 20 degrees, around maybe a little bit above when I started and then got down to around 20 at least when I quit. And the battery power was only down 50%. So that was after roughly two hours of imaging. I did three minute exposures at ISO 1600 and I did um, uh, a few flats, uh, I'm sorry, a few darks. So I believe I probably had the camera on at least three hours for that whole night. And I was really impressed to have only half of a battery discharged over those three hours. The Zonks. This is something I've just, the magnification for focus goes from zero, of course, you know, normal screen, 1x, to 5x, to 30x. I wish we had somewhere intermediate. Give me a 10x or a 15x. I think we went up to 10x on previous uh, Canon DSLRs. The 30x will be nice, especially with shorter focal length, wider field of view lenses. I'm sure that'll be great. But for a telescope, 30x can really almost be unusable depending on how, um, if you have electronic focusing or if you're focusing manually, it can be pretty sensitive. So there's a lot of movement on just about any mount system you're going to have at 30x. So 30x is a lot. I'm glad to have it. I wish there was just a step between 5 and 30. That's a big gap. It's unbelievable is that in the firmware and the, the menu options that Canon does not include an intervalometer programming. So you still have to use the um, manual intervalometer. Unfortunately, as of right now, it's not being covered with um, the ZWO, the ASI Air, the software development kit hasn't been released from Canon. That's my understanding. It's kind of dependent upon Canon to release the software development kit. So until that happens, you're not going to really have the this, this ASI Air coverage, and you're going to be really relegated to using really pretty much the handheld. For bulb exposures, you got to use the Canon TC80N3 intervalometer. So Sony has an intervalometer built into their menu, and it's a beautiful thing. And um, really, Canon needs to upgrade that to their firm. Canon references that they will it will operate down to 32 degrees. I had it out down well below 32, down to 20. Camera worked very nicely. I didn't notice any uh, frosting even on it that night. Those are kind of my initial initial thoughts and feelings on uh, the Canon RA body and how it's interacted. I use this with the Williams Optics. So let's take a look. I'll show you how I connected this to the Williams Optics for the night. Now, if you have non-R lenses and adapters, you have to use the, the Canon adapter here that will allow you to use all of your legacy EF lenses. And so this has worked fine. I'll show you how this hooks up to the Williams Optics and make a few more comments on that connection and that testing of that night. So let's take a look. Okay, here we are looking at the connection with the William Optics Red Cat. And I've had a lot of people ask about uh, connections and how you use filters. Well, this is looking at, this is this piece here is the William Optics uh, interface. I believe it's called the 42 to 48 adapter. And this is right here where you can input a filter into this section right here. So that comes with your Williams Optics. Now this piece here, 
the gray piece is the actual Canon adapter from William Optics and that is completely necessary for for this setup because if you use a set of extensions and like traditional T adapter it is uh, too long and uh, too deep in its uh, focal length you need this T adapter from William Optics to work with the Canon this is the RA attaching and this is the I believe it's the technical TC80N3 intervalometer controller for the um, Canon and maybe I'll spend some time going over this this thing's a lot more complicated than it needs to be but uh, this is how I interface with the camera during imaging sessions and so the camera itself on the Williams Optics Red Cat with the William Optics adapt got to use that and then this is the Canon EF lens to R lens adapter or R to EF so you have to have that to interact with the the R the RA on the Red Cat and that's how we connect it and remembering that this is a full frame uh, 36 by 24 with about five micron uh, pixels across the frame and uh, so it works pretty well in the red cat we'll go into those details here in just a second we'll do some pixel peeping <laughs> 